just recording. Okay, so it's gonna be three trivia questions, and I'm gonna base it off of like boards assumption or whatever we see. So it's gonna be three questions. Whoever answers the fastest and correctly, so raising your hand base um, is gonna win prizes. So we have three questions, three prizes. And if you guys don't know, we have snacks in the back. So please help yourself to as much food as you want because we have a lot. So we're gonna go on to the first question and they're all real inquest questions that have been on previous exams. Oh, did you already? <laughs> okay, this is the first question. The nurse receives a report on the med search unit. Which of the following clients should the nurse see first? So let's look at raising hands. Let me see what this was. I can't remember. Jackie. Jackie? <laughs> Is that Jackie? C. A client two hours after a cast was put onto his left arm complaining his arm feels funny. Does anyone want to disagree with Jackie? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, yeah. And for those who didn't know, for those who didn't know, the reason for this is because come. I'm just gonna skip all the other questions. But if you have an R of a cast on, if it's funny, this is related to impaired circulation, and you need immediate assessment because it could be compartment syndrome. Compartment syndrome. That's right. All right, next question. You can see me after for the prize check. Okay. <laughs> okay, the next question is, an older patient is scheduled for hip replacement surgery in 12 hours. As a nurse reviews the health history, she knows that the patient has a history of alcoholism. Which of the following actions should be taken to best care for this patient? Mm -hmm. Even if you don't know, ask a freshman, you can still get it. I know y'all smell it. Yeah. <laughs> Jaden? C. C asked the patient when he had his last drink. Does anyone want to disagree with Jaden? I'm hearing mixed answers. You guys can guess because you get it right. You raise guess. your hand. Yeah, yes. raise your hand. <laughs> it doesn't hurt. You guys aren't failing the answer. Okay, Daisy <laughs> says D asked the patient for a year in BAC prior to surgery. Oh, right. That would be smart. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone wanna? So we have a C and a D. All right, going once, going twice. <laughs> it's C. Oh, Application oh, oh, last drink. Yay, go Jaden. Um. So the reason for this is it's because the coroner checked that the patient hasn't had relapsing. So it's crucial that prior, during, and post surgery, we have to know the status of the patient's alcoholism to prevent any withdrawal from complicating his health status. All right, last question and hardest question as well. A patient comes into the ER with COPD exacerbation is having difficulty breathing. What action, if performed by the nurse, would be considered negligence? This is probably the hardest one because honestly, I got some wrong. <laughs> Oh my god, I remember this one. Jackie? Is it A? A? Anyone want to disagree? Virtually, you guys could add in the chat what you think the answer is, but unfortunately, I can't give you the prize if you're online. It's good practice, though. Yeah. I remember this question. Everyone was pissed. Oh, yeah. I understood it after I looked at the rationale. No, yeah. So the audience is mumbling random answers. It might be four. Wait, does anyone want to ask me? Oh, she said Jackie answered. Or, yeah, so uh, someone else. Who wants to answer? Does someone have a guess? Like, look at educate again. Jackie said A. I agree. I agree. I agree. Everyone says A. I heard like B's and C's and D's. I say A. I love it. Is anyone saying it in the chat? Anyone in the chat? No. No. <laughs> All right. It's gonna be A. Okay. So this is because the patient has COPD, so we can't over oxygenate them, so we don't. They can only receive local at two years. Oh. So yeah, thank you. That's all the NCLEX questions we have, and next are our important announcements.
Okay. Jackie won twice. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Hannah. Okay. Oh. Okay. Hi, everyone. So, I'm just here with the membership update. So, our current member count right now is 72 members. Wow. Yay. Yeah. Crick's still growing, which is really cool. Current total hours for members right now is 655, which is really cool. And total number of club hours is 1,312.85. So keep up the good work, guys. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love updating the spreadsheets with all the hours. So yes, awesome. And then so you can check your current amount of hours by clicking the link in the website. And then just to like reiterate again, um, if you haven't paid for a membership yet, I would highly recommend it just so I can officially track your hours. You can get them from like meetings, coming out to events, et cetera. And just a reminder for graduating seniors, um, be an active member of NSNA. Um, I moved the date to December 17. Originally, it was December 6th, but I was going to do it towards like the official end end of the semester, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, make sure you have the NSA membership fee paid, and then just fulfill the hours of participation requirement. Yeah, thanks, guys. Okay, so Mai isn't here, but um, our current volunteer opportunities and events. So, um, if you guys could scan that QR code and in person as well. Um, there'll be an updated spreadsheet of all of the opportunities for hours. And we also added um, some virtual ones. I believe we're still doing the, um, if you advertise or repost NSA on Instagram and tag us in your story, you could earn a certain amount of hours. And then we have the art and school supplies drive. Collections are due by December 3rd at the main level TSU service desk. Um, and then I believe on the spreadsheet as well, it'll say how many hours you can get for how many um, pro like products or supplies that you bring in. And then plans for next semester. Um, I believe Mai is planning on putting on a professional development and LinkedIn workshop. And you can get hours for that as well for attending. And then an, a collaboration with UCI. That's exciting. I know they have that. Um, so their frat, I think their health frat and their own uh, student association. So updates are coming. And then if you've been if you missed past meetings, uh, it's uploaded on our YouTube page. I think we have two meetings up there and you could watch it and then submit the code to our membership chair and then you could get hours for that as well. And then, yes, thanks. Hi guys, um, I'm here to update about BLS. So all of the NSA instructors, which are also the members of the board, are certified now. So that means we can teach BLS. Um, and we're um, attempting to host um, probably two BLS classes in January. So I'll send out an email about that. So if you guys um, need CPR certification, whether you're going into nursing classes or you need a renewal, uh, these are open for you guys in January. And as CSU of nursing students, you guys get a discount. In the past, it's been like $20. So that's a pretty oh, good yeah. discount. Um, $20 off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that would have been a real steal, right? Um, and then we'll be teaching you guys. So um, it'll be chill. And if you guys sign up for the ACLS bundle, we're working on confirming the Zoom dates, but it's probably going to be January, um, that weekend, January 21st and 22nd for the two Zoom dates. Um, but I'll send out an update about that as well. All right, thank you guys. Thank you. Okay, so jacket design. So make sure you vote for the design for this school year. These are the three options. And then if you haven't already, you could just um, take a picture of the QR code and vote. And we'll be announcing the winning design at the end of the meeting. How exciting. And then we'll also, um, we'll send out like the order form and the, like more information later on. And hopefully we could get those orders in over break or even before break, depending. We're going to figure out a deadline for you guys.
Hi guys, my name is Hope. I'm the conference chair. And um, I know I sent out emails, no one responded, it's okay. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to put it out there for all you guys. Um, if you have any kind of conference that you guys are interested in, it doesn't have to be any of the mentioned, like if you just wanted to do, if you're interested in women's health and there's a conference for it, um, you can just email me uh, and I can get funding for registration fees and also they are doing um, out of state conferences too, so you can get funding for um, your plane ticket in your hotel up to a certain amount, of course, um, and in certain states, so um, apparently certain states are blacklisted, like Cal State Fullerton. Um, so like southern states i don't know i don't know i can get you the list for that but um if there's a conference that you guys are interested in just let me know you just need to know at least two weeks beforehand um so i can start paperwork because they don't do funding after the conference so if you guys are interested in anything it's a great opportunity to do some professional networking for free so um please email me right there yeah that's it thank you guys thank you Okay. Our guest speakers. Uh, let's see if they're here. Yeah, Stacey. Mm. That's not yet. Yeah. Stacy's not on yet. We all um never sure that we're in Philly. She has orientation class. Oh. <laughs> we can just do an intermission. Okay, we're gonna be doing a brief intermission. Feel free to get some snacks or a drink or a bathroom break. And then we'll be starting our guest speaker at, oh, never mind, Stacy's here. <laughs> She's here. Okay. okay, so two of our guest speakers. So our first guest speaker is Stacy. She graduated in May as part of the accelerated BSN. And now she's an ICU nurse. And then here are some here's some information and a fun fact about her. And then our second guest speaker is Anna. She also graduated May and she was part of the traditional cohort and she's in cardiac step down. And here's more information and fun facts. So feel free, um, if you're virtual, you guys can either put questions in the chat or you could unmute yourself and ask, and then we'll be asking questions as well. Next slide and stop sharing. Okay. okay. So whenever you guys are ready, Anna and Stacy, if you guys could um, turn on your cameras and unmute. Sorry, I'm just trying to get used to this on my phone. And then if you guys could just um, introduce yourselves really quickly for the audience. <laughs> Hi guys, um, I'm Stacy. I graduated this past May. Um, and I'm now working as an ICU nurse at La Salle. So if you guys are doing clinicals at La Salle, I'm doing night shift, but you can say hi if you get there early. <laughs> hi, my name's Anna. I also graduated back in May and part of the traditional cohort. I work at Mission Hospital, which is one of our clinical sites too for med surgeon ICU. So if you see me around, which you probably will if you have Barry Barnhill. I'll just say hi to me. Um, I work on a cardiac step down and I'm also a night shift, but uh, as long as I work Thursday night, you'll see me at change of shift on Friday morning. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you guys for coming. Um, so, one sec. Oh, we already have some questions. So, Danny, you want to ask you a question? Hey guys, um, I'm Danny. I think we briefly met, but you guys um, obviously graduated early. Congratulations um, and getting into your positions. 
Uh, my coworker, actually, Stacy, she just got a job at ICU at Los Al. So if you see Mel as a new RNT, tell her. Mel. But you guys probably have a big ICU, huh? Um, our ICU, I think, is like 17 beds. What's her last name? Um, honestly, I don't know her last name that well. <laughs> She's like my coworker. Okay, well, if I hear, I'll say hi. Okay. Um, but anyways, my questions, um, how early did you guys start applying to new grad like programs or like um, like um, new grad jobs? Um, like while you guys were in nursing school or like when you guys graduated or? Um, so for me, uh, mine's a little different. So because of COVID, everything got kind of pushed back. So our, our NCLEX, we took it like, before yeah june july august somewhere around there um it was a couple months after we graduated and then i kind of dragged my feet <laughs> about applying like i i started applying almost immediately after i graduated but i kind of half-assed it and was like oh yeah that one passed i'll do it the next one um but then eventually after i took my nclex that's when i took it a little bit more seriously and i started applying to more um more new grad programs so it kind of depends if you want to like start work right away. I know some of our my classmates like they took the NCLEX and then they started work all within like a week um, of when we got our authorization to test. But some people like me waited a couple months. So it kind of kind of depends on how you feel. So there's new grad programs that start kind of all the time. So it's not like you have to do it right now unless you want kind of one of the bigger um, hospitals like UCI, Providence, or one of those, then then you're going to want to watch those due dates carefully. Um, but other than that, they do it a couple times a year. So I don't know if Anna, you did something different, but that's what I did. Yeah, so I'm the, the other half. Um, I actually <laughs> started applying while I was still in school. So I started looking up new grad programs, um, I say, actually right now, like a year ago during first semester, the fall semester. And I made an Excel sheet, just the, just a little tip, but I made an Excel sheet of um, hospitals that I was interested in. And I put like how many times they have new grad programs a year so that I know when to apply heads up so that I'm not scrambling later on once I graduate. Cause I'm, I'm like <laughs> pretty meticulous that way. I just like being organized that way. Um, the first place that I applied to was Sharp Memorial in San Diego, just because I have a friend who graduated a year before me that works there. So I was like, it would be cute if I worked together. But I applied to that like spring semester just to test out my resume to see if I could get through. So that's kind of um, my mindset. And then I graduated in May, applied to the Providence new grad program for the fall, which was um, like end of May. So right after I graduated, I applied to Providence. And then I got the job offer before I took my NCLEX. So I, on the interview, um, I had the test date ready to go. And I told them, this is my test date and I will pass it. So hire me kind of thing. Um, and then I got hired. And then I started after um, maybe like two, three weeks after I passed my NCLEX. So it is doable. Um, if you know where you want to work, like go for it. Start applying early. Like it doesn't hurt. It's free to apply, you know. Okay, thank you guys so much. <laughs> That's all I have. Does anyone have questions? Does the chat have any? The chat? Uh, no. Okay, guys, thanks for coming, Brittany. Um, if you guys don't mind sharing, uh, how many hospitals and programs did you apply to and how was like your success with all that? So I applied to two hospitals total, one for the SHARP that I tested the resume, the second one, Providence, I chose Mission Hospital and then I got in. So I think um, I'm part of the, like, it's rare that you um, kind of get hired right away. I got really lucky, I think, because um, I had, what is it? clinicals for med surge and ICU at Mission Hospital. And you guys, when you're doing your clinicals, network with the nurses. Um, your clinical instructors, they're nurses. Ask for great letters from them. 
um, especially if they work at the hospital, et cetera. So that's going to get your foot in the door. Um, that's going to increase your chances. So really take advantage, like start now um, if you haven't already. And then uh, you may be really lucky like me. Yeah, I got really lucky. Yeah, I, I think I applied to, I don't know, I wrote it all down, but I think I applied to eight hospitals um, and they're kind of all over kind of like um, what Anna was saying. I wrote, I also made an Excel sheet. So if you want me to share that, I can share that. I'll take out all my random notes, but um, I have all the due dates and stuff too. And I think I applied to about eight of them. Again, a lot of those were kind of half-assed applications. So don't do what I did in that, in that sense. Like make sure you have everything, make sure you read all the instructions. Cause there's some of them where it's like, you know, they'll say upload your letter or upload like your resume, but really what they meant was upload your resume and your um, letters of rec and all this all in one document there. And so I sent in the whole application with nothing else. So I didn't get an interview for that, but there are, I did get interviews um, at Providence and then I interviewed at um, Alhambra and then I got this one. Um, and I got, I got a job offer from both Alhambra and um, La Salle as well. So like Anna said, I'm going to reiterate, um, talk to your clinical instructors. They're great. I found out about this La Salle one through my clinical instructor. Um, but I also talked with other clinical instructors. I talked with the nurses that I worked with at the various hospitals, especially if it's a hospital you really want to work at, um, network. Thank you. And then a follow-up question. So you guys are both saying to like network with the nurses on the floor, but as a student, how would you specifically network? Are you like, yeah, yo, follow my LinkedIn. Here's my resume. Like, how do you like bring up that conversation and how would you like word things? So what I do, um, I just really like saying hi to people. They're like, hi, my name is Anna. I'm like, how are you? And if you um, continuously go back to the same unit, you know, you recognize the nurses, right? Um, and so when you see them around, say, good morning, Brittany, good morning, Stephanie. I mean, Greg, sorry, Stacy. <laughs> good morning, Stacy. Like, just say hi. And then we're like, oh, hey. I'm like, oh, I'm Anna, by the way. I was with you last week. And they're like, oh, yeah, I remember you. And then if you click with certain nurses um, at the end of the shift, after you give a report and everything, or before you leave for post-conference, be like, hey, today was such an amazing opportunity. Like, I really appreciate all the things that you showed me and let me do. Like, would it be all right, like, if I got your number so that I can ask questions in the future, if I wanted to, you know, apply to the, this hospital or um, if, if I'm going to get you again? And they're usually like, yeah, sure, cool. And then they give you a number. So then I have, like, a whole bunch of random, like, uh, numbers that are nurses. Also network with the PCTs, too, because... Um, they're really part of the healthcare team. And usually they end up becoming nurses at that hospital. And that's also your, one of your other big connections. So say hi to everyone and be like, hey, you're really cool. Like, let's exchange um, information. And can I ask you questions after? They're usually okay with it. And another thing too, you can also just straight up ask them like, hey, if I'm interested in working here, like how would I go about it? How did you... Um, not like, how did you get a job here? But like, what were the steps that you took to um, get hired here? What's some tips that you would give for a new grad? Or, you know, what things should I be including in my resume? What things should I not include in my resume? Things like that. So you can ask them like um, pointed questions to you, especially as you get closer to that time and just be like, hey, is, do you have any tips for me? Um, any suggestions, things like that. And sometimes they could send you like a referral link if they work for certain hospitals. It's like a win-win for the nurse and for you. So you always ask, just ask. Like if they're not cool with it, move on to a different nurse, you know? Like it's it's not it's not you, it's them. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, I have a question. So from your interviews that you guys did, were there any questions that threw you off or surprised you that you didn't expect? Yes. So I had an interview for Providence and they're usually behavioral based questions. So it's more like, 
Tell me about a time you encountered a difficult situation and what did you do about it? Tell me about um, what this means to you. Tell me about this instance of blah, blah, blah. And I prepared myself for that. And I also knew that was a case study. So I prepared myself for them. But what threw me off was they asked me a prioritization question. And I was like, oh shoot, I didn't prepare for this. And they're basically like, okay, imagine you're a med surge nurse and you have all these different things going on. How do you prioritize? What do you tend to first? Walk me through your thought process. And they give you like a minute to think. And it was like, one, you have a family calling for an update. Two, there's a doctor on the floor um, asking for you to update one of his patients. Three, um, a call I went off for the bathroom. And four, um, you have a patient complaining of pain. How do you prioritize? What do you do? That threw me off, yeah. But I think I got it because I got hired. So <laughs> I would like to think so. <laughs> what was the answer? <laughs> uh, okay, okay. So this is what I did. I said, well, the family update can wait. That's like the least of my concern. Um, but what I'm going to prioritize is pain, the patient and active pain. I'm going to go see first. And remember, there's other people working with you. So I said, delegate the call light to the PCT. Um, and then I would have <laughs> usually, yeah, delegate your job if it's possible. And if it's something that requires me there, then I would ask for the PCT to let me know if I need to be there. And I will go out, I will go update the doctor, and then I will go back and reassess my patient's pain, make sure, and then the other patient's okay. And then finally, once I'm settled down, I'll call and update the family. And they're like, okay, cool. That's good. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I actually interviewed at Providence too. Um, I just forgot about it until you said that question. I was like, oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> that threw me off too. <laughs> um, and then for, so s s the same interview, I didn't interview at Mission though, I interviewed at Apple Valley, but it's the same questions. Um, and I knew there was going to be a case study question, but I kind of forgot to prepare for it. So that threw me off. And, um, I think the one that threw me off the most was the SBAR because I was like, oh snap, I haven't done this since clinical. So I kind of winged it. But um, yeah, <laughs> the most questions though you'll get is, you know, the typical, why'd you go into nursing? What do you like about our hospital? And then the behavioral questions. So tell me about a time when, da da da, da. So. And then I have another question. So we have some first years here with us. So I was wondering if you, like as new grads, if you have any advice for them? Well, I think if you're first year, you probably need more advice getting through nursing school. Um, so my biggest take in nursing school, your classmates, the friends you make in there is like your friends for life. You realize that when you graduate, you're like, oh, like we went through a whole lot of crap together and this is like forever. And you know, help each other out, support each other. Um, what I see going on here, this environment, like, yeah, like hang out and talk to your peers and get to know them, people that are in the same class, maybe one above, one below, like connections, connections, connections. And uh, just do your best. And something that kind of carries over after you graduate is know how to care for yourself. So self-care is so important. And um, we, we throw that word around like it's so casual self-care. It's kind of hard to really find what works best for you because I know I struggled. Um, but that really carries over after you work and you come home and you were, you're trying to relax, trying to like de-stress and you're like, oh shoot, what do I do? You do what you love, you do what you enjoy. And so really hone in on that skill. Take care of yourself. Like your mental health comes first. Always, always remember your mental health is so important. Um, so to add on to that, a couple things that I would recommend, especially for first years, is one, take advantage of your clinicals. Like, I know you're new and you're probably like, oh my gosh, I don't wanna do anything because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions to your clinical instructors, um, asking your fellow classmates, like, 
a lot of things I learned was actually through my classmates because they just be like, hey, I just did this thing, you know, or like they'd be like, hey, I'm about to go through this. Come come with me. So you're either going to help them or at least if you're just watching that, you'll still learn a lot. Like a lot of the things that I remember is just like, oh, yeah, I remember this happened on this clinical shift and this is what happened. And then it'll help you build your foundation so that when you get to the point where you're a new grad, it'll, it's not going to be easier, but it's kind of easier, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, take advantage of being in clinicals and like go and do stuff. Because just remember, if you're, especially if you have your clinical instructor there with you, they won't let you hurt the patient. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to be like, hey, can I do that? Or, hey, can I help you with this? Or, hey, can I, you know, can I do something? Or at the very least, hey, can I watch you do that? You know, so that's my recommendation. Yeah, and adding on top of that, watching anything in general is so beneficial to you. I noticed that once that I'm a new grad, um, because during my clinical years, especially my past year, um, I went out of my way to do and watch everything, every procedure, even if it's like a doctor's procedure. Now that I've seen it, when I hear it in report or when I see it in the chart, I'm like, okay, I know what that is. I've seen what that's like. Like, I know what to expect. And so experiences are worth so much. Like, and it will also help you in your interviews because you have a lot to talk about. So go out there. If a nurse comes up to you, be like, hey, have you seen this? Be like, no. I want to go see it. Can I go deal with you? And then go up to your charge nurse, be like, so this is what I want to, this is the um, year that I'm in for nursing school. This is what I can and cannot do. And if there are any opportunities to watch, do, or observe some things, please let me know. Like you got to be proactive. Um, you got to advocate for yourself. So do that and you'll succeed. I know it's intimidating at first. I know I've been there, but you guys got it. Thank you guys. So, much. so um, I was just wondering, like, how was your transition from being like a student nurse to a new grad? And like, what was the most difficult aspect of that? So I'm going to go first on this one because I today is actually my orientation day. <laughs> so it's first day of work. Um, so I can't really answer it yet. <laughs> Ask me again in two weeks. <laughs> Okay, um, I'll answer this one for Stacey. <laughs> um, I actually started in September. So the first two weeks is like a like paperwork, HR kind of orientation, getting used to the hospital's like mission values. It's kind of like a regular class in school. So it felt the same. And I was like, I get paid for this? Great, I love it. And then um, the following month when my orientation actually started with my preceptor, and I got on the unit, um, it really depends on the hospital that you work for. So when you're applying, like, make sure that you're doing your research and their new grad program is like what you want to get into because different hospitals have different orientation periods, different like classes and things. So for me, um, Providence offers like in-person classes. And so in that sense, I felt, I felt like a student still. But then gradually, like a month or two in, like right now, I'm almost done with my classes. I'm doing more shifts now. The most challenging part is <laughs> when you're in the room and the patient says something, you can no longer say, let me go get your nurse because you're that freaking nurse. <laughs> and you're just like, wait, I'll get back to you on it because I'm your nurse, you know? <laughs> and it's just, um, it can be overwhelming at times. And the doctors come up to you and they actually talk to you because you're a nurse scripts and they ask you questions and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm visible now, like crap, that's been hard. Um, and, and so like, I'll be with my preceptor and the doctor will be sitting down and I have like updates and um, I need to ask for orders. I'll like tiptoe my way in like, hey, doctor so-and-so, and they're like, hi. I'm like, oh, I'm freaking out in my head. So that's been hard. Another thing is multitasking and um, time management. That's so hard because especially if you work day shift, um, you have to answer calls for your patients, family, doctors calling you, 
other nurses are calling you. You have lab, PT, OT, SD, everyone's calling you. Um, and something always goes wrong on your shift. And you also got a chart. You also got to do med, uh, med pass. You got to do assessments. And then on my unit, I work on a step down. So then patient's condition either get better or deteriorate. Nothing ever stays constant. And so that's been challenging. I did have this one shift where um, my patient like went downhill and um, I had another patient who was like also deteriorating. And then weirdly, my most like stable patient was post-open heart surgery patient. And I'm like, what is wrong with the shift? And sometimes you just got to cry it out. And sometimes you just got to talk to your preceptors. And so that's the hardest part of transitioning. But you do have a lot of support. So use your support. You're never alone in healthcare. Always remember, like nurses got each other's backs. So it's hard, but it's doable. Like I enjoy it, but I also cry, but I enjoy it. That makes sense. That helps at all. Do you think, like, I know it's based individual, but how long do you think would be an appropriate time to have, like, how long of a preceptorship? Because I know that time is very. Um, uh, my preceptorship is actually, like, three months long. So my preceptorship is supposed to end, like, mid-January, and I started, like, um, October um, on the floor. And then you get like 20 something shifts. And so I feel very comfortable right now. Like I feel confident that I can take care of my patients. It's what I'm scared for is when I'm on my own because that's when like shit hits the fan and you're like, I don't know what to do. Um, so I feel like the first year you're never gonna feel completely ready. And I think that's same across the board, but I think three months is like pretty good. Um, I think sometimes ICU preceptorship is longer. So it just depends on like which unit you're on and what hospital you're at, but it, it feels it feels okay so far. So that's what we wanna hear. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Does anyone else have a question? Anyone virtually, do you guys have questions? Okay, do you guys have any final like advice or anything like generally that you guys wanna say? Um, no, I mean, I said most of the things I wanted to say. Um, feel free, like if you guys haven't done the mentor thing, I definitely recommend that just because um for like especially the first years you'll get someone who's been recently through the program and they'll help you out um and I know like I remember in the first year everybody's worried about their grades and stuff so how to study like I don't remember how I studied to be completely honest with you <laughs> I passed so get someone who's been there and they can help you through that and then for those of you who are about to graduate or something if you have a mentor from before or if you know somebody who recently graduated like get in contact with them and you can still always have a mentor I, I think mentorship really helps and don't forget um, your clinical instructors can also be your mentor so I'm still in contact with a couple of my clinical instructors and so when I was applying for jobs and stuff I was like hey you know what should I do with this? Can you look over my resume? Can you look over, you know, this and that? So definitely, definitely find a mentor. I agree with Stacy. And your clinical instructors have Instagrams. So I just like follow <laughs> them. And they usually follow back, like as long as you're, you have a good relationship. And so I keep contact with them that way. Um, yeah, maybe I could leave my like contact info so that you guys have someone that just graduated and can ask me questions. So I'll just put that in the chat and uh, just just tell me who you are because I'll be like scared. <laughs> like, who is this? <laughs> yeah, I'll leave yeah. that. In. If you call me and I don't answer, leave a message or text because I don't usually pick up numbers that I don't recognize. So text is better, just FYI. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Um, before you guys leave, can we take like a, I'm going to take a screenshot and like a quick picture.
that's okay. Okay. Right, I'm trying to figure out how to do this on the phone. <laughs> so if I don't have it, I'll send it to Brittany <laughs> and Brittany can give my number. I think I would know. Okay. My, you guys want to like come forward? <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you so much for coming, guys. First of all, it's messy. You're welcome. <laughs> you <laughs> it's messed up. I don't want to go this um, Okay, this is not what I do. I don't know why it's like that. Okay. <laughs> Huh, the view is like glitching. Let me see if I can fix it. What? what? The view is like... standard. You can just do that for now and we can add on the virtuals. We'll Photoshop all the virtual. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to take a few. Are you ready? One, two. Wait, can you see the slide? <laughs> Okay, hold on. <laughs> this is glitching. Okay. Um. Oh my god. Just take it off them. You want to say weird? Like, is Melanie on? Technical difficulties. Sorry, guys. Can you guys still see me? No. No. <laughs> Um, why did it mess up? Yeah, it's not. Can we long out? Oh, wait, now it end the whole meeting. <laughs> now they're all gone. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Actually, they're just, Let me see. They're just right. Can you see me? I can see you now. Yeah. Okay, cool. I can't see you guys. <laughs> okay, well, I can see you. Okay. Oh, let me see. If I can see you. Wait, I'm okay, let me see. I could see you guys again. <laughs> um, you guys, let me figure this out really quick. I don't know what's happening. I'm gonna do another picture from here. Okay. And if you guys are trying to raise your hands as well, <laughs> to some of you. I am. <laughs> okay, we're going to have one of our members take a screenshot if you guys. So, so just smile. <laughs> uh, Melanie, do you want to count down so they know? Yeah, I got two. Okay, ready? Okay, get ready. One, two, three. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> Abigail joined in late. Oh no. Oh, but she's driving. Drive safe, girly. <laughs> Bye, guys. No okay. Okay. Wait, wait, I don't see you guys, but um, I'll, just, Have a good day, guys. I'll tell you guys. Um, yeah, I think for virtually that's. All we have, unless Amy, do you want to unmute yourself and announce the winning design? I actually put it on the presentation. Oh, okay. At the end? Yeah, at the end. Okay, we're going to announce the winning design. Um, if you oh. guys, okay. <laughs> oh, we have to refresh Oh. <laughs> Okay, refreshing. <laughs> and oh, 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 winning design. Let me show you guys. Oh, Emily. There you go. Oh, Emily. <laughs> that, was a, that was a winning design. So we'll send out the information about how to order the prices and everything deadlines. Um, if I can't see who's in here, let me see. I can't see who's in here still, but um, and then Stacey, if you guys are still here, thank you so much for speaking and giving advice, answering our questions. And 
this is our last meeting of the semester. So I'll send out um, a newsletter, most likely around when next semester is going to start with some updates. And thank you guys. Good luck on finals. Good luck on finals. <laughs>